this is para 57 of the eighth schedule that deals with the small business exemption. Now, one thing that I want to clarify right up front is we have section 12 cap E of the Income Tax Act, which give, gives us the small business corporations and the differential tax rates for the small business corporation. Power 57 of the eighth schedule, on the other hand, doesn't actually refer to a small business corporation. Because remember, a small business corporation is defined in Section 12 Cap E, and it has requirements like turnover below 20 million, you can't have other shareholdings, yada, yada, yada. Right. Power 57 is referred to as a small business or the sale of small business assets, but it does not require you to be a small business corporation. So we need to be very clear from that point of view. The requirements to qualify for the 1.8 million CGT exclusion are that you have to be selling immovable property that was used for business purposes or any other asset used wholly or exclusively for business purposes. Right. It specifically excludes financial instruments or any assets used to, der to derive any income in the form of an annuity, rental income, foreign exchange gain, or royalty. Right. So in this case, the sale of a vet's business, which comprises of potentially the property, or in this case, it would actually be probably the lease agreement, it would be your client list, it would be the staff agreement, it would be that whole going concern, would qualify because it's assets used wholly or exclusively for business purposes, right? However, I do have to be able to demonstrate that the market value of all the assets doesn't exceed um, 10 million, right? Also key point, when we're looking at whether you qualify for this para 57 1.8 million exclusion, we are looking at the total value of the business. Obviously, if you're a sole prop, then you're looking at the value of your entire of the entire business. If, however, you're in a partnership, you don't, or or a shareholder in a company, you don't just look at your, what your stake is worth. You have to look at the business as a whole. And this is where I have seen quite a few individuals who thought they were eligible for the small business exclusion actually kick out because their stake may have been worth below 10 million, but the total value of the company was over 10 million. All right. So that's the one thing. The second thing is please, when we look at the valuation criteria, it doesn't say look at the net asset value. It just says look at the market value of the assets. If you have a lot of debt, then unfortunately, you can't use that debt to go and drop yourself below the 10 million and then to go from um, and to try and qualify for the exclusion. The presumption is the assets are paid off, the debt are your issue. All right, so common misconceptions. What can I do if I am selling those assets and below um, the 10 and the market value of the assets is below the 10 million threshold, right? If you have an active business as a sole prop or a stake in a partnership or at least 10% equity of a company that owns some of those business assets, you have to have been actively involved for at least five years and you must be active. You can't just be a passive shareholder and you are either over 55 or you are disposing due to ill health. In that case, then you can go and claim, calculate your CGT as per usual, as per the usual rules and you exclude up to 1.8 million of the gain. Right. So property used for business, all other assets used exclusively for trade, exclude financial instruments, exclude um, assets which derive passive income, right? Total business, 
total market value of all my assets cannot exceed 10 million. You must have held your stake for at least five years, right? Um, and you have to be actively involved, right? So in this case with my vet, they are over 55. I'm presuming that they would have been actively involved for the past five years. So as long as the value of all the assets is below 10 million, in which case they reckon the full value there would would be 1.6, we'd absolutely be able to claim the para 57 exclusion. And because the capital gain can't be more than the proceeds, the entire amount would be excluded. Right. One other point with this is to please also bear in mind that this 1.8 million um, is a lifetime benefit. So you don't get 1.8 million per property, or sorry, per property, per, per business. You get 1.8 million of over a lifetime. So if you've got two companies, so you've got an operational CC, the, uh, two operational CCs, for example, both, and the sum total of both CCs market value of assets is below 10 million, then yes, you can, on the sale of one, go and take your exclusion. And then if there's any left over, apply it to the second. All right. But you don't get 1.8 per sale. The problem you're going to run into, um, if you have the traditional property company, ops company scenario, is more than likely you're probably going to reject, the property company will probably not qualify for the, for the small business exclusion because of, the, because of this criteria. Because if you go back to what you, um, what assets are applicable in a property company, yes, I'd have a property which is being used for business purposes because it is being let out, but it mainly derives income in the form of, of rental income. So a traditional property company is going to scope out of this exclusion. I know that's not what most people like to hear because we, we've done this, we set up these structures for empty news like this. Um, but that's the unfortunate reality is property companies are more than likely not going to qualify. But if you had the property in the CC, then it would qualify. Okay.